Hi, uh, my name is uh, Dr. Basaraj Devashetty. I am a uh, uh, consultant gynecologist and uh, fertility specialist. Uh, working at, uh, uh, at my own center, Vishwas Fertility uh, in HSR and Marathalli. Um, I have been uh, working as a fertility specialist for the last uh, 10 years. I uh, have done my post graduation from uh, KMC um, Mangalore, Manipal University and uh, done my uh, training in uh, United Kingdom uh, 8 years and I did my uh, fellowship in uh, subfertility in uh, St. Bartholomew's Hospital London in, uh, for uh, 2 years and uh, I have been practicing in Bangalore for the last uh, uh, 8 years. Uh, today I am just going to um, uh, give a brief introduction and also regarding the what is IVF procedure and what is ICSI procedures because um, it is important so many things are given in the uh, in the website so uh, this is just a concise um, uh, information regarding the IVF treatment so um, what is IVF treatment in vitro fertilization the meaning of uh, in vitro fertilization is in vitro means English it is outside or in agni glass so uh, what happens inside a woman body it happens outside means it happens in the IVF lab so uh, the fertilization and uh, you know uh, embryo formation whichever happens in the inside the tube it happens in the lab so why uh, what are the indications and why uh, the patient should undergo IVF uh, first is the couple have been trying for more than two to three years and uh, which is unexplained you know they are they done all the treatment like ovulation induction and uh, three to four cycles of IUI, IUI and still they are not getting pregnant the next step is to go for IVF or ICSI or um, uh, if uh, the, the husband found out is very very less then we do uh, something called ICSI or if the couple have um, uh, any practical issues in uh, any uh, problems with the um, uh, sexual intercourse then if the IUI fails then we go for IVF treatment. So main indications are unexplained subfertility or uh, unexplained uh, severe male factor, severe male factor. These are the main two indications uh, we go. Other indications are tubal block, if the, both the tubes are blocked or they have severe endometriosis where the uh, tubes and ovaries they are all uh, clogged, they are all uh, completely adherent, it is a frozen pelvis where uh, the natural conception is not possible then we go. In brief, those who have unexplained subfertility, those who have severe male factor, both the tubes are blocked and uh, uh, other treatments are failed and uh, uh, coupled with uh, sexual intercourse problems, uh, those are the indications for IVF. Uh, normally what will happen, uh, there are around 10 to 12 follicles, each follicle uh, in the ovary has got one egg inside. Um, every month we have those women who have regular periods one egg is released every month despite having 15-20 follicles or eggs only one will grow one will develop and rest of all follicles will die again a new batch of follicles are recruited every month so in IVF what happens uh, the treatment uh, what we do is basically uh, we any treatment in fertility starts from the second year third day um, uh, we do first do a scan take an history and uh, do a scan and uh, in the scan we would like to see number of follicles and if there is any cyst in the ovary we would like to see and if everything looks fine then we check the weight of the uh, woman and uh, her age, weight uh, and the previous any treatment she has undergone and then we start the injections. The injection what we start is hormonal injection which are gonadotropins which is one is FSH and one is HMG. So uh, any injection can be uh, uh, given in combination depending upon the situation. Treatment starts from the second or third of the period where uh, a woman has to take injections daily. The reason for giving daily injection is to get as many eggs as possible and she has to undergo serial follicular scan. Uh, she has to come on the second day, then she has to come on sixth day of the period, then she has to come on the eighth day of the period and then she has to come on the tenth day of the period. So uh, daily we give her injections uh, and monitor the follicle growth and the follicle or we expect all, majority 80% of the follicles to grow and reach a size of around 17 or 18 millimeter. And uh, this usually the injection uh, average number of days the injection need is around 8 to 9 days of uh, hormone injections. And one more injection we start in the uh, middle of the cycle like 6 from 6th day uh, we start one more injection which is called as an antagonist or a cetrotide or cetrolix injection. That injection will help to avoid the X getting released because we wanted to collect the X from uh, uh, from our, uh, from the ovary and uh, fertilize in the lab so we don't want the egg to get released so one way one injection we give from second day until the 10th day is to grow the eggs 
the second injection from the sixth day to tenth day uh, we give it to avoid ovulation when uh, the follicles reach around three to four, four follicles and they reach around 17 18 millimeter then we give a uh, trigger injection it is called hcg injection which will helps to mature the egg and uh, uh, and uh, if you don't take the eggs within 36 hours the egg will get released so we have to do the egg retrieval process uh, between 34 to 36 hours where the woman has to come on empty stomach so she will be put to sleep a simple sedation takes around 15 20 minutes uh, we do a transposition scan we attach a long uh, needle uh, and uh, we uh, pipes the uh, needle to the vagina, go into the ovary, into the follicles and we pipes the each follicle and aspirate the fluid in the follicle which contains uh, follicular fluid and also egg in it. So we give that follicular fluid to the embryologist in the lab so they, they check for the eggs. At the end, you know, when we aspirate all the follicles from both the ovaries and uh, we will get a final count of uh, uh, the number of eggs what we have got. Average number of eggs what we get is around 10 to 12 is a good number uh, what we can say for any couple. Um, uh, the next what will happen is uh, the when the procedure finishes the, the woman will be drowsy for uh, uh, 2 to 3 hours and uh, end of uh, 3 hours you can have some liquids and at the end of 4 hours you can have some semis like idli or upma and at the end of 5 hours she can go home. Say example if she comes at uh, 7 o'clock in the morning we do procedure at 8 o'clock and by 1 o'clock, 12 o'clock, 1 o'clock you can go home. And husband has to give sample around the same time, around 8 o'clock or 9 o'clock, he has to give a semen sample. So we get the eggs, we get the sperm and in the lab we do IVF or ICSI depending upon the uh, clinical situation. So IVF is done for normal means when the sperm count is good and uh, uh, then we go for IVF. If the, if the long unexpensed of fertility or the count is very less or motility is very less, then we go for ICSI. And uh, the, couple, the woman will be discharged after 4-5 hours after the uh, procedure and next day we check for the fertilization. So embryologist will give a brief uh, uh, introduction and what is going to happen when they are going to call you and what are the status of the embryo grade and the quality. And uh, uh, they will call you on that uh, day 1 to check the fertilization. So our, say example they have 10 uh, eggs uh, they have, next day we expect at least 8 of them to get fertilized. And um, uh, next we call you on the third day and then you know out of eight probably six might have come up well and the two embryos might have stopped growing. So you can expect six embryos to grow and but the end of uh, day five which is the day what we call blastocyst with the growth um, the, the best embryo is the good blastocyst. So we expect around 40-50% of the eggs to become good blastocyst, good embryos. So then we will discuss with you and then um, uh, we discuss whether should we go for uh, the fresh transfer we have, uh, means we can transfer the embryos in the same cycle or if any clinical situation arises uh, we usually go we freeze the embryos and we do it in the next cycle which is called frozen embryo transfer. This is about uh, the um, I, I, IVF procedure. In IVF procedure in general the success rate is around 60% and if it is a severe male factor if we do ICSI the success is around 50%. And uh, in general what we say is if uh, 10 women go for the procedure, 6 or 7 out of uh, 6 out of uh, 6 out will get pregnant and uh, 4 or 5 will have a kid. So that is the average uh, what we, uh, what is the success rate of uh, IVF. And uh, um, anything to do uh, during, uh, during IVF, um, in during IVF you don't need to take off and the main thing you could uh, avoid traveling if you learn to take injection or you can ask your husband to um, learn and give the injection for two days and the rest is six seven days you can give the injections at home or you can take the injections nearby uh, your nearby your place a clinic where a nurse can give the injection to you and uh, uh, the injections has to be taken at the same time and uh, plus or minus two or one to two hours is quite acceptable so undue delay should not be done and and, and uh, you should not uh, skip the dose of uh, the injection because if you skip it the eggs don't grow the eggs stop growing uh, some of the few eggs which are smaller may stop growing so you may get less sex this thing and uh, um, uh, injections uh, uh, any problem with the side effects you have to speak to the doctor very uh, is a very safe injections to take it and common side effects are like local uh, some swelling itching redness can happen with the injections and uh, sometimes a minor headache can happen for which you can take paracetamol tablet if any serious uh, side effects you can you can speak to the uh, uh, speak to your doctor